Om Jnana Timiran Tasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vinamaya it is a abominable for a person living in the Grihastha ashram to give up the regulated principles, for a brahmachari not to follow the brahmachari vows while living under the care of the guru, for a vanaprastha to live in the village and engage in so-called social activities, or for a sannyasi to be addicted to sense gratification. One who acts in this way is to be considered the lowest renegade. <coughs> Such a pretender is bewildered by the external energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and one should either reject him from any position, or taking compassion upon him, teach him, if possible, to resume his original position. Purport. We have repeatedly stressed that human culture does not begin unless one takes to the principles of Varnashram Dharma. Although Prihasta life is a concession for the enjoyment of sex, one cannot enjoy sex without following the rules and regulations of household and life. Furthermore, as already instructed, a brahmachari must live under the care of the guru. Brahmachari guru kule vas vasandanto guru ritam. If a brahmachari does not live under the care of a guru, if a vana prasta engages in ordinary activities, or if a sannyasi is greedy and eats, meat, eggs, and all kinds of nonsense for the satisfaction of his tongue. He is a cheater and should be immediately rejected as an imposter, as unimportant. Such persons should be shown compassion, and if one has sufficient strength, one should teach them to stop them from following the wrong path in life. Otherwise, one should reject them and pay them no attention. What's that called? ISO, there's some number of the company, 9001. What does that mean? That means, it's supposed to mean it's a good quality company. Everyone is working. So saying in Krishna consciousness, we should be more attentive to details. So you might think it's not a very important thing. Just put the book like this, and then I can move, move it myself. But the thing is, if you're going to do the service, you should do it properly. Every, every detail. Otherwise, we can't go back to Godhead. We're talking about Krishna and the gopis and so many things. And we should begin with how to be a proper servant. Otherwise, if we do everything, if we're sloppy and don't pay attention to details, then that means we're thinking of something else. We're not thinking of Krishna. We have to serve Krishna properly. Sometimes the gopis would put their clothes on back to front or upside down, but that was out of ecstasy. You shouldn't do that just out of negligence. That's quite different. That's Tamagun. Okay. So, the subject of this verse... Oh, you want to make a summary translation of that? Is it really required? I mean, it seems like everyone seems to know. Oh, I see. There's no Mataji who can translate for that? In most places we have a... They listen to something. Okay. All, right. All right, give a summary translation of that. If it's worth doing for Krishna, it's worth doing properly. So, again, condemnation of those who do not follow their vows. Varnashram society was strict Still, the, uh, recently, the, in the Madhva Sampradaya, one Sanyasi who went overseas was rejected for doing so. He's Vahishka, he's put outside the community. Well, it didn't really work because one of the Ashtamatha Swamis accepted him in his mud, but theoretically he's banished from the Madhva community. Actually, that's based on a misunderstanding because if you go to it said one shouldn't go overseas because that means to go to the Malaysia Desh and that means one will become contaminated. I didn't say anything about Krishna. I didn't say anything about Krishna conscious. How did that come in the translation? The Vedic injunction is there that one should not cross overseas because one will be contaminated by the bad association in Malaysia Desh. And for this reason, this sannyasi was put outside the community, theoretically. 
But if one crosses over the seas and turns the malechas into devotees, then that is very much wanted. So, the rules and regulations that apply to ordinary men may not apply to pure devotees. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees, the group, came from Bengal for the first time, then Maharaj Pataparudra asked Sarvabhom Bhattacharya to point out to him who are all the devotees he wanted to see who they were. And he saw them all chanting and dancing and they hadn't shaved their heads, which is normal on coming to a holy place. The first thing one should do is have one's head shaved. And he came to know that they were not fasting. You're also supposed to fast for one day on coming to a holy place. So he asked, why? You think these are the most pious people, devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You think they'd follow the rules more than others. Of course, you don't get shaved once, but the point is, you'd think they'd follow the rules. They wouldn't be neglecting the rules. But Sabhavam Bhattacharya explained that on the platform of praying, the ordinary rules don't apply. The only consideration is how to satisfy Krishna. Like to, yeah, this is an Shesh, meant for holding up the temple. Because the devotees are so, they're, they're so much in ecstasy of love of God, they don't, they don't think to shave, they just want to chant and dance. Similarly, the devotees, when they arrived in Puri, they first went to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he asked, have you gone for darshan of Kamala Nayana, Jagannath? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also Kamala Nayana. But that's a common name in Puri for Jagannath. So they said, no, we came to see you first. And Mahaprabhu asked, why? If it's a normal thing, you'll go for darshan of Jagannath before you do anything else. I mean, first of all, you get shaved, take a bath, but you don't start social visits with the purpose. You have to take darshan of Jagannath. So the devotees explained, paraf- or in, in, parallel, parallel to an example from the Upanishads, that the heart is the driver and the legs have to move according to the heart. So the legs had no choice but to come here first under the control of the heart. So uh, rules and regulations which are meant for ordinary people may not, may not necessarily apply to devotees. Although most of the rules of smartas, shaivas, dhanapatyas, shauryas, bhaktas, and even lingayats are the same. You know what a lingayat is? It's a big community of some kind of shaivas in Karnataka. You know, others they may not be. They, they come here, lingayats? Not much. Everyone comes, but not lingayats. Even Muslims come, Jains come. They won't come. They have a different idea. But they're a big community, and then some, maybe two crores, something like that. Yeah, maybe. So anyway, the point is that all these communities, Shaivas, Shaktas, Ganapatyas, means Marathi Wallas, <laughs> in, in modern language, Vaishnavas, Smartas, whatever. They all follow the, the basic daily activities are the same. Dinas, dinachari, you know. da- daily activities. At least they're supposed to. Nowadays they don't follow, but everyone should rise early during or just before Brahma Mahurta and then do Shocham means Malmutra Tiag, Dhantadhavan, Snanam, all these things. You know what this means? These exact words are actually given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he's instructing Sanatana Goswami how to compile Vaishnav Smriti, Hari Bhakti Vilas, things that devotees should do. 
And early morning before starting work or eating or anything, one should do part, puja, jap, dhyan, all these activities. I, I was surprised when I first came to the temple of Iskon in England because we got up before four o'clock. That was the first surprise. And the next surprise was that breakfast wasn't until 9.30, five and a half hours after getting up. <laughs> because the common way of life there is you get up, you don't take a bath, brush your teeth. They, at, least, at least in the Western countries they do brush their teeth in the morning. And then immediately take breakfast. And there's no question of puja, part, all these kind of things. Of course, India is like that now also. What's the difference between India and America? 5,000 miles, that's all. <laughs> Otherwise, there's not much difference. <laughs> Telugu is also spoken in America. Not as much as English. But the way it's going, Telugu will not be spoken in India either. They'll only speak English. So, followers of Vedic culture are supposed to follow all these things. Before, before work, before eating, first thing, first part of the day that should be dedicated for religious activities. And evening time also, after dark, for religious activities. And uh, often in the daytime also, after lunch, it's very hot, then people, that, that is the time for listening to the Puranas in some communities. So you may say, well, where's the time for work? It takes two hours to go to work. The day before yesterday, we were, no, yesterday morning we left from Tirutani, and we saw the local trains, 5.30 in the morning, going to Chennai. More than two hours journey. So many people going. So there was work, but not Work, 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 and work. Did you count how many times I said it? Okay, do your work. Translate. But, Yavat Artha Prayojana. One should work for his necessities, that's all. But we have increased the necessities. Necessity is roti kapra makam. But now necessity means mixi, TV, at least a bajaj, if not a maruti. Maruti doesn't mean Anuman, Maruti means <laughs> something out of a factory. We have so many necessities, artificial necessities. But previously people had time for dharma because they were not so busy making money to buy useless things that they don't need. So the, lady, the ladies will say, well if I don't have my grinding machine then I have to do by hand and to make the idli. Grinding machine, there's no, yeah. Now they, in the, for the original, see, and then I won't have time to, if I have to do this, I won't have time to go to the gym to be healthy. But if you do this grinding and you carry the water and all, you don't need to go to the gym. So automatically taken care of. It. Yes. Automatically healthy. So Prabhupada was recommending a more simple way of life based on traditional Indian culture for the sake of saving time so that we can perform bhajan. But in India, everyone is crazy after progress. And the fact that the whole culture is becoming degraded to cat and dog level, people don't care. You've seen in the last 10 years or so, just one example, that divorce, which was previously considered very something very bad in India, just become accepted. Normal. So people think degradation is normal. They think it's progress. So the Krishna conscious movement has an important message that real progress is not how to create 
creating more and more goods in factories and our consciousness goes down to the level of a cat or a rat. But real progress is progress on the path of loving Krishna. People in India are more in illusion about this idea of progress than any other country in the world. In the West, they already know that our society is just a big mess. Everyone, no one will, no one will protest that. Everyone knows. Everyone agrees. And what's the situation in Russia? People don't care that much for the so-called progress. Then you don't know. You haven't been there for a long time, huh? You're staying in India. Well, I go there once a year. And they're not so crazy about all this progress. They're they're not impressed by the American way of life. But in India, people are uh, desperate to be just like Americans. Or what they think Americans. They don't know what Americans are like, but they, what they imagine America should be like. We were talking about this Vahishka, Vahishkraman, throwing people out in ordinary English. Putting up. So, previously, if one did not wear tilak, that in itself was enough, you're out. If one didn't have tilak, that meant he's a very, he's, he's not, he's outside the Varnashram system. He's chandal, lecha, like this. Not fit for diksha. Adaiksha is the Sanskrit word. Not fit for diksha. But nowadays in India, people wear tilak, they think uh, there's something funny. Just like this gentleman here. Aap kaha se aare? Rajasthan. Salem. Oh, Andhra Pradesh. Karnataka. Okay. So, aap tilak lagate, Sri Vaishnava. Aapke larke lagate? Acha. Aap bhagyavan hai. Kungi aisa hai ki bahu family mein o baap o sab kuch palan karte hai lekin lakhyon aur sab kuch chhod de ye sab bekaar hai aisa sach jo bekaar hai sochte hai ki vastavik sanskriti wo hi ban bekaar hai you don't know him what i'm saying is that You'll find the older people in the family, they are wearing, some of them, still wearing tila. But the sons, they won't like to wear. They think this is all rubbish. They are rubbish. People who think like this, they are rubbish. You know how to translate that? It doesn't mean they're literally garbage, but it means they're useless. Every language has words for this. Charaka. So... But they, they are, but they are thinking that the actual genuine culture that is useless. Even in America, there's a major cultural divide between the old traditional Christian types and the modern people, modern progressive so-called types who want to make every, you know, homosexual marriage and all this. You know, there's no end to their liberality. And the last presidential election in America was was fought, actually, it was clear division between the old traditionalists and the modern progressives. And the traditionalists won this time around. So this is also going on within ISKCON. He said the difference is that the uh, progressive liberals, they, uh, they hold, they're calling all the shots, they're in charge. Those who want to introduce or oh, anti-shastric feminism and now the next thing coming in now they're having women gurus and then the homosexual marriages and all this kind of thing coming from the top of this guy. Sorry to say. I'm in the, I'm in the minority opposition. <laughs> now you may think, well, what's, you know, what's, why are we discussing all these things? What's it got to do with Krishna consciousness? Why don't we just talk about Krishna taking the cows in the forest and dancing with gopis, or discuss Bhagavad Gita, three modes of material nature. But this is the practical application. The culture is the practical application of 
social ideas. Prabhupada spoke a lot about culture. Here, Bhagavatam is, in this whole section, is instruction for civilized human beings, telling how people should live. Prabhupada spoke a lot about culture, many things which are very unpopular in the modern age. Prabhupada said there should be kings, not elected fools. This is not at all a popular idea in the modern age. And Prabhupada was very strong on the traditional roles of men and women, division of duties, which is very unpopular in the modern age. The idea that men and women should be equal in all respects. Women should also pick up machine guns and fight in Iraq, which they're doing. The American army. What a demoniac idea. You want to send your daughters to fight in the army? Isn't it a shame for the men that they, they can't fight their own fights? The women have to go and fight. And the men are sitting at home holding the babies and what? <laughs> yeah, Purush. They, they, they want to... It's Mayavad. They want, they want to make no difference between Purush and Prakriti. So it's, it's another symptom of the madness in modern society. As Prabhupada pointed out, it is impossible to make men and women equal in all respects. Because men don't give birth to children. So the woman's body and mentality is meant for looking after children, which is a very important job in society. Because if the children are looked after, they become rakshasas, which we're seeing in the modern age. The children are so much like rakshasas that they, when they're going into school, there are guards at the gate in, in many places in America who, who check them for weapons so they don't kill the teachers or anyone. <laughs> no, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. This is a fact. This is a fact. Now, how are children we expect to be nice, sweet, cherubic? Cherubic means like an angel. How did they become so dangerous? A few years ago, I, was, I told some devotees from America who are in India, I just come back from the West, and I told that in England, now I was telling them it's such a bad situation that there's young girls, gangs of young girls, age 12, 13, going around and attacking people and killing them and taking their money. And I was saying, because I was thinking, this is, you know, this is something really shocking. I said, oh, we know we're from Detroit. That's an old thing. Though. <laughs> so, America's more advanced than Britain. So this is what you want? This is what India wants? You say no, but everyone says yes. Actually, they don't want, but they're being programmed by demoniac leaders. We don't find anything from the educational system or from the TV encouraging people to come to Tirupati for darshan of Shunivas. There in there, the propaganda you get is drink alcohol and have illicit sex and be a demon. So people are doing that, but without any advertisement, they're coming for darshan of Shunivas. That means that the, still the natural inclination of people here is to be pious. Still, even now. Still people want this. But the leaders are making propaganda and turning people into demons. And people are getting all the wrong ideas which are going to spoil their lives in the name of progress. So we have a very big job. We are fighting against the whole wave, the tsunami of modern life. <laughs> just comes in and <laughs> drowns everything. We have Prabhupada's books. People are taking them. We have to educate people in the knowledge in these books. Now one misconception in our movement at the present time is that we can just go along with the modern society and preach and make people devotees. But if we keep people in the demoniac way of thinking, uh, the, the culture of modern life, then how can they cultivate Krishna consciousness properly? We gave up the concept of Gurukul, and what we call Gurukul now is training people to enter the modern rat race, and maybe if you, maybe have a little Krishna consciousness on the side. But the main aim of the education is to make people members of the modern demoniac society, maybe vegetarian members. Recently, one young boy, with the permission of his parents, came to live in our ashram in Salem for one month. But then uh, a certain leader of our society phoned up his parents and said, you, you shouldn't let him join, he, he'll spoil his life, he has to get an education, all these things. 
So this is, this is not uncommon. People, devotees are thinking that first you have to make all your material life nice, and then afterwards maybe add a, some little Krishna consciousness. But we should understand that the real necessity of life is to be Krishna conscious. It's not, so, it's not a hobby to be added in if you have a little time. It's not a, part, it's, it's not a part-time entertainment. So Prabhupada said, 50% of my work is not done. And you consider what Prabhupada did. 50% not done, not establishing that Svanashram system. So, we're preaching to people to be Krishna conscious, but their way of life is such that people are working so hard, they don't have time for bhajan, which is, it requires time to be Krishna conscious. And we accept it as normal if our Grihastha devotees, they somehow or other cram in something resembling 16 rounds, and then they get initiated. Although they have no time for reading or associating with devotees, and you think, okay, that's all right. So we have a... If we actually examine what Prabhupada's instructions are, how much he was stressing on creating situations in which people can live peacefully, but they don't have to work so hard, and they're not associating with this demoniac society, so they can be in a situation favorable for becoming Krishna conscious. These verses that we're discussing today talk about the fall down of people from their position. But we have we've kind of accepted in our society that even most people who get initiated, they'll probably fall away. It's just kind of accepted. Isn't it? Most people, they come up and then they just, and it's like they're, they're swimming and just trying to keep above the water, chanting their rounds, and then they go under the water again. Bloop. <laughs> so we have a very big job to establish the situation in which people, they won't be pulled down by this horrible modern way of life which just turns people into demons. Because the situation in modern life is such that it's, it's very dangerous. There's so, so much propaganda to be grossly fallen and so much opportunity. These are some of my thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts on these topics. Because I'm seeing actually we're distributing so many books and the books are having their effect. But then Prabhupada said, 50% of my work, what comes after that? We have to see also how to help people become situated in Krishna conscious and create a favorable situation so that people can remain in Krishna conscious and progress in Krishna consciousness. When we were driving, we were driving from Velo to Tirutani, then Tirutani to Tirupati. And we saw so much, most of the land is just overgrown, not used. Prabhupada, he, he said, all over the world where I'm going, he's saying the land is not being used. He said, this is mismanagement. People are moving to the cities. They'd rather live in the city in some slum and earn money so they can drink and, and have a TV than live in the village and live simply. They think it's backward. A few years ago, I went to some program in Bundelkhand, which is on the UPMP border. It's it like, like a kind of poor, backward area, what they would call backward area of UP. So, so many people came to the program and I asked, where are all the young people? Where are all the young men? And they said, Surat, which is, you know, a few hundred kilometers away. Surat in Gujarat. They're all working in the factories. They don't like to stay in the village. So Prabhupada, he spoke on these things. He, as he, just like a he, he would be going past in the train and he would see the land is empty and he would comment. Prabhupada had a very practical vision how to reform society. Book distribution comes first. That must go on. But we have to see what is stage two also. So like I said, many thoughts. Means Prabhupada's mission. I have many thoughts about Prabhupada's mission. We have to be very careful not to merge our ISKCON back into, make it part of Kami society. It should be the alternative, not, not just part of society, but an alternative to the present way of life. So, any more comments? But you made a point. Still in India, people in the tradition, 
Interesting. <laughs> Translate? Oh, you already must have told them this, huh? No. He's saying that they made some survey or interviews with like the mo mo modern progressive young people in the metro cities. And they, what came out is that many of them said that actually we like the old traditional way of life, but we're caught up in this modern way of life. What can we do? We should give them the answer. What can we do? We should give them the answer. But they're smart. They're not going to take any any hollow answer. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.